Hey guys, what's going on? So this is a tutorial on how to shoot and edit in the Brandon Wolfell style. Before we get into the tutorial, I just wanted to preface this by saying, when you use a photographer's style like Brandon's, don't just go out there and copy him and shoot exactly the same type of photos he's shooting. Use a tutorial like this to learn his style, learn a way to edit photos, shoot photos, and then take that and go create your own style out of it. You don't wanna go out there and just copy other people's work. You wanna come up with your own voice, you wanna come up with your own style so that someone could create a tutorial on how to create your photos because you're not just out there copying someone else. So once you played around with this style, this technique, this look, start tweaking it and see what you can do to to make it a little different. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to shoot, I'm gonna show you how to edit in Lightroom, and then I'm gonna show you how to do some advanced editing in Photoshop to give you another look and feel. I'm gonna include a few photos that I took during this adventure that you can go and practice and play with on your own. I'm also gonna include my Lightroom preset that comes from my edit of these photos. So you can slap that on and take a look right away how I went through and tweaked all the settings. I also suggest that you go through, when you get to the section on Lightroom, try to do it on your own, maybe apply my Lightroom preset to one photo and then try to duplicate it on your own on another photo. The whole idea is that you want to learn how to use all the different tools to create these looks and colors that you see in Brandon's photography. He's got a really cool style, it's super unique, and it's a lot of fun to go out there and shoot in this style. All right guys, first things first, let's get into shooting some photos. We definitely thought the pier was a great place to do this tutorial because there's tons of lights, there's lots of stuff going on, and there's lots of opportunities for us to run around and get some different types of shots to play with. So I went with my buddy Jesse and a few of my friends, and Jesse is also a photographer. He is shooting on the 5DSR, and I was shooting on the Panasonic GH5. In the files that we're providing for you to play with, I'm gonna give you a sample of both so you guys can check out the difference between a full frame versus a micro four thirds in this same type of setting. All right, so when you're shooting, there's a few key things that you really need to make these shots work. All right, the first is a lens, preferably a prime lens that can go super wide open. So you want a really shallow depth of field. Ideally, a 50, 85, or 135 is the focal length that you're gonna want. I'm actually shooting on a series of old school Canon FD lenses, which you can get for like 20, 30 bucks on eBay. There's really a range of what you can shoot on, obviously, and and the idea is to just use what works for you because it's more about the way in which you shoot, not what you shoot on. When you decide you're gonna go out and shoot some photos like this, the key thing is lights. You're gonna want either lights in the area that you're shooting or you're gonna wanna bring lights to the area because a lot of his photography is all about the use of lights and color to give it that cool feel that he has throughout all of his photos. So when you're shooting, you always wanna shoot at as wide open as possible, get that very shallow depth of field, and it also, that will give you the opportunity to get that delicious bokeh that you see in the background and in the foreground, all those orbs of light. That's really what you're going for when you want the shallow depth of field. You want orbs of light and you want them big. So you're gonna want your lens wide open to get that really cool look and feel. Some other things to think about when you're out shooting is how are the lights playing behind the subject and how are the lights playing in front of the subject. But then also keep in mind that you wanna see how the lights are being reflected in your subject's glasses. In a lot of his photography, he uses uses a subject matter with glasses. And that's something to really keep in mind because you can use those as a reflective surface to really pick up on the surrounding elements. And all of his photography, it's all clear glasses. So clear glasses are a key thing to get the style to work right. Some other ways that you can play with the setting is how can you create texture? So whether that's something like smoke or confetti or water, like what are different elements that you can add to the, to the image that will create a different type of texture, a different light something else that's reflective or glowing in some way that creates more depth, more interest into the photo. So just think of different elements that you can use and that you can play with. You know, we're playing with lights, a string of lights and the lights around the setting here and the reflections off the glasses. There's different ways to use all these different reflective surfaces and different textures. And that's the idea. Think reflective surfaces, lights and textures. So in terms of shooting, have fun, be creative, go out and just play. We spent the whole night just playing with photography, riding rides and doing all that stuff and just exploring what we can do with our camera in this kind of style. 
After you guys are done watching this tutorial, I really suggest you go out there and go shoot some photos and try to play with different shooting techniques, playing with that shallow depth of field, using different lights in foreground and background. Grab some of your friends, go out, shoot some photos, see what you can come up with. All right, so let's get into Lightroom. This is where we're gonna develop the style and look and transform these photos that we took on the pier to something that has that Brandon Wolfell look and feel. After the Lightroom section, we're gonna get into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you one more cool technique that I think you guys will love. So when we went out and shot, we got a ton of photos. I mean, we just played around. We messed around with the lights and different settings. We tried to shoot a range of photos so we could really get a sense of how to nail this style and to give you guys some cool samples to show you. So we're gonna play with this photo here. And the reason I chose this photo to do the sample of is because you can see in the background, we have some cool lighting effects from the Ferris wheel. And then we have our lights down here in the lower right hand corner. Also, you can see in her glasses here, we have some cool reflections of some of the other lights going on. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is play with my contrast and bring it down a tad. From there, I'm gonna bump my highlights up, shadows much further up, and my whites I'm gonna bring pretty close to the top that you can go. And then with the blacks, I'm gonna bring those up as well. So you're starting to see the image change a lot when we start doing this. The key is here is we're gonna set up these different highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, contrast, and then from here, we're gonna go down to our tonal curve and then play with our colors, and then we'll probably come back up and tweak some of this stuff again. So just kind of get a base because what you wanna do when you're editing is get yourself into the look and the style that you're going for and then from there you start tweaking. And So I'm gonna bump down my vibrance a tad on this photo. I'm gonna bump up my saturation a little bit. We'll see how that works. And then I'm gonna bring up my tonal curve on the low end. When you're on this far low end and you bring it up, that's how you get that very c cinematic. And you'll see it all across people's photography and Instagram. And you know, that's how you get that cinematic washed out kind of look. But then what you wanna do is bring your curve down on the lower end and up on the upper end. So what the tonal curve is, is that this is your all your values on the image from black to white. So basically my extreme blacks I want to bring up and the rest of it I don't want to come up at the same rate. When we get up to our whites, this is like, you know, all the whites in the photo, all the bright lights. I want to make those pop. So basically I'm creating a, I'm washing out the image a little bit and then creating contrast by bringing down my blacks here and bringing up my whites over here. So now we get into the colors and we're going to have hue, saturation, and luminance. And these are the key to making these photos look in this style. And you're gonna to wanna to play with these a lot to really get the look and feel. And every situation is gonna be different because you're gonna have different lights hitting your subject in different ways. However, there is a way to go about playing with these. And once you know that technique, then you can go in and fine tune it. So I'm gonna change my hue. I'm gonna bring my reds up, oranges down a little bit, yellows down. I'm gonna leave my greens for now. I'm gonna take my aquas and I'm gonna push them pretty far up. You can see how the colors are changing into that teal, really looks cool. And then we're gonna bring our blues down, get it away from that purple and more of the teal. We're gonna take our purple, we're gonna bring that up. All right, let's go into the saturation. We're gonna bring down the reds. Let's bring down the oranges even more. Let's take our yellows down a little bit. And then our greens, we're gonna take them out. Aquas, we're gonna boost. Blues will boost. Purples will boost. And then magenta will bring down. So let's go into luminance. So luminance is how bright a color is. So you can see I'm playing with the reds here. And if I bring the reds all the way up, anything that's red is gonna get really bright. Or if I bring it down, it's gonna get really dark. So because skin tones are a lot of time in the reds and oranges and yellows, I'm gonna first bring up the reds and that's gonna really make her face pop. And you can see that happening already. With the orange, I'm gonna do the opposite. So now that we're having this part of her face bringing up, we're gonna bring other parts down. So you start creating more of a contrast. And yellow's up. We're gonna make our greens brighter. Basically, we're gonna make a lot of this brighter. Aqua's brighter. I'm bring our purples up. Okay, great. So now we have image that looks much more like his style. And like I said, when we get into this, we're gonna go back up to the top and maybe we're gonna start tweaking our saturation. Maybe bring our blacks down a little bit. We're gonna start playing with these to dial in our settings. Like I say, and there's a few little things here and there that will just make the image pop a little bit more. And then if you ever wanna see your changes side by side, you can click down here in the lower left-hand corner. You can do your before after. So to take this a step further, you might wanna boost her face a little bit more. And so what we can do is start playing with 
uh, diff different types of masks. So the first one I'm gonna do is just bump up her face a tad. And what we'll do is put a spot right on her face. We're gonna make sure it's feathered at around 50. There's different ways that you can just bump up a little bit and really make her face pop even more. Another thing that you can do, which is really cool, is start adding on a graduated filter from like the left or right and play with different colors. So now we're gonna push more into the blues here and you can see how that the teals are really gonna pop. We'll do that on the other side. So now what we're doing is creating a, we're framing her with the top and bottom with this more teal look. And then in the center here, you really see that purples popping. It's almost like cotton candy coloring. I mean, we're just playing with making these colors really pop, different ways to do that. So you can go in different areas and start adding different effects. You, using your different effects, like circling an area or bringing in a color from one side or another. You might also take out a color if it's really distracting, but the key is creating cool color separation, cool exposure separation, creating that contrast so you get those brighter whites and those darker darks, but then also bringing up the blacks so you have that more flat look cinematic style. And with this style of photography, you don't want to bring the image too far over saturation because then it has a completely different feel. So you can dial in your saturation to where you feel, but somewhere in that range and it looks really nice. Now that we've got this look down, let's move into one more thing I wanna show you how to create the lights and the bokeh feel in a photo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a photo that doesn't have lights in the foreground and background like the last one I showed you. We're gonna take a photo that has some lights in it but we really wanna create that light contrast and those the different lights in the background, the different bokeh in the foreground. And we're gonna do this by going into Photoshop and actually adding layers behind in front and on the subject themselves. All right, so if you're following along and you're using the photos that I'm providing you, check out the second example, open up my Photoshop file, and let's get after it. All right, guys, here we go. So now we are in Photoshop, and we're going to go through how you add lights to a photo that doesn't really have lights. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create some lights in the background. I'm gonna create some foreground elements that look like they're right in front of the lens, and then I'll add more to her glasses. Okay, so you can just do a Google search. You can find a bunch of different types of elements that will play well. You'll type in bokeh, lights, or things like that, and then you can just start seeing this kind of stuff pop up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find some different bokeh elements that either are all white or have some color in it. We're gonna bring these into the image. I'm going to color dodge them. You can play with all the different type of overlay settings here and see what you know, fine, works best for you. For what I'm doing on this photo, color dodge is what I'm looking for. So you create those orbs, but it gets rid of a lot of the other stuff that we don't necessarily want. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of over-exaggerating how you would edit this photo. It's since all these layers are on top, but I wanna erase them from where my main image is. I'm also gonna feather out these edges so you don't really see a hard edge from the edge of this original photo. So that one's good. Here, we're going to going to edit her out of this so it's not affecting her face. I'm going to edit the edges again so it looks organic. And then we're going to do this one as well. And what we're essentially doing is just putting some elements in the background. So now when I turn all these on, there's definitely more bokeh going on in the background. It looks nice. And you could also bring down the opacity. So you can just dial it in to what looks good. I think that has a cool look to it. So now you can see as soon as we turn this on and off, we're already adding these orbs of bokeh in the background. So the next thing I wanna show you is creating some sort of look on the foreground. This time, we're gonna get them really big. We'll do a linear dodge on this one. We are gonna stretch them. So when you stretch it, you're gonna create a different look. And this is what you want for the foreground element. So you're making these orbs really big as if, as if they're in the foreground. And now with these, you're gonna do the same type of thing where we're gonna we're gonna edit out some of it. The idea here is that you're creating bigger orbs that are foregrounded. So as you can see down here in the bottom left-hand corner, I'm having that light peer in so it looks like it's flaring right from lens. Now these might start interacting too much, so maybe what you'll do is go in the background, some of those elements, so the foreground stuff starts popping a little bit more. We're gonna grab one more shot of bokeh. 
So these are a different color, and what we're gonna do is we're painting these across her glasses. So we'll do another color dodge. We'll just plaster them right there across her glasses. What we can do is go in and transform and skew so that we get a perspective that it's reflecting off her glasses. Paint them right across, good, cool. Edit brush and edit out anywhere that they're hitting the frames or outside the glasses. And now they're reflecting straight off. Also, one thing to keep in mind when you're editing these different elements of bokeh on the image, if you want to have the same look, the same purples and blues, that cotton candy feel, you might wanna take the bokeh in the Lightroom and do the same type of color correcting so that it matches the style. And one last thing to keep in mind about this photo, I went to the extreme and showed you putting a ton of bokeh in the background, in the foreground, on her glasses, all that stuff. But you really wanna dial it in to what looks best for the image that you're using. I just wanted to give you a broad brush stroke and show you how you could amp it up to the extreme. So when it comes down to editing your own photos, really play around with what you like for your look and feel to give you the image that you want. All right guys, and that's how you can recreate Brandon Wolfhill's style. Again, like I said at the beginning of this video, don't go out there and just copy other photographers. Use this as a jumping off point. Maybe you try to do some photos like this, you get the style down, you get the look and feel down, and then go out there and try to create your own voice, your own style. All right guys, I hope you liked that tutorial. If you wanna see more of these style of tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Let me know some of the other photographers that you might wanna see another tutorial on. Guys, make sure you check out my Instagram, at one works you can go see my style it's completely different than Brandon Wolfell's make sure you subscribe if you like this video leave a comment to let me know what your thoughts are and guys I will see you on the next one